Why not? Let's have a go. Let's see if this works. Okay, that's that, all set. Now I'm just going to turn it off private. Now that I'm ready. Save it catches up. And we're in business. Ah. Here we go. Cool. Looks to me like everything is sorted. And um, although it keeps starting for some reason, and I don't know why when I don't want it to. Sounds coming through. Right, let's ditch that. I don't need them. Earplugs. Sound is good. going to start. I think that's probably the most sensible thing to do. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and uh, I'm not talking about Dungeons and Dragons 5e today, uh, although I will if people want to. Uh, I'm here to paint a miniature and this is the human cultist from the Wrath of a Shardalon board game. Um, I've done a few reviews on it I've got the miniature here. I actually got three of them, so I'm going to try and do all three. Yeah, 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 I'm going to try to do all three. We'll see how we go. I brought myself a hairdryer this time. I didn't have a hairdryer last time, uh, but fortunately I've been able to borrow one. And apparently it blows cold air. So with, even with the, the, the humidity here, the paint might actually dry. Well, I'm hoping that's the case anyway. Um, today what I thought I would do is I would stick with a fairly basic colour scheme. Um, I'm going to go with a red in the centre and then the cape itself will be black. So we'll just shuffle some colours out of the way. So red, black, uh, there'll be white because there's little skulls on the back of it so we'll need some white. And I'm going to use the tan as well. Uh, the tan itself is probably going to wind up being part of the actual um, mace that he's holding and I've got some flesh and I'm going to use the yellow and the flesh together although I think I think we'll see how we go I might mix the white because it's a bit thicker I might thick that and um, just mix that with the flesh color to get the flesh going so my first job is to sort of put the base coat on and real simple I'm just going to paint over the section where the cape is and the head and cow is I'm going to paint that black and then I'm going to go in and paint in here white because I'm sure that a white base is going to be able to well, basically take the red paint better. That's my intention anyway. I've already sprayed these with a grey primer and uh, yeah, let's get going. So that's that and I need some black. Um, you, look, all of the materials, paints, so forth I'm using, I'll put in the description. I'm using the... Valijo paints that I've used before and I'll be going for roughly an hour and then I'll stop if it's not finished then we'll come back to it some of the time uh, for those of you who are wondering what happened with the oculo swarm um, I had an accident so I'm gonna have to do some repairs before I proceed with that anyway never mind accidents do happen And uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to ask questions about Dungeons and Dragons, by, you can just stick them in the comments and I'll answer those questions, not a problem. Or if you just want to be real quiet and continue whatever you were doing, that's fine too. Oh, 
I've uh, not made the error of not putting newspaper down. I've put newspaper down so it doesn't wind up all over my desk. I had paint everywhere last time. Not really helpful, but oh well. These things happen. If you're wondering what's going on in the background, that's because there's uh, my next door neighbours, the kids are playing in the pool. And this microphone picks up literally everything, even on settings that it shouldn't. <laughs> and I've got all the windows open so the sound will travel in. It's just too hot to, to not um, leave the windows open. in there. I'm not looking forward to painting the face. The face is going to be so hard to get at. Come on you. In the crevices. Okay, all right, so I've, I've painted everything apart from the center section because I feel like that should be a different color and um, the rest is just going to be like a black cloak. So I've got to do that two more times, so I'll put that aside, grab my next one. See, I tried to put black over this not so long ago and it just did not work. It came off looking grey, sort of like a black grey. Stay, good. Put it in the face there. For those of you who haven't figured it out, it is summer in New Zealand, and I'm so glad. I was told, tired of being cold or wet. Right. Hi, Daryl. Uh, what do you got here? Hi, Fred. Just about to have my supper and watch a video. And I wanted to thank you for the lair. Uh, one you did all your videos are so clear and concise Yeah, I, I still what I'll do is if I can find a bit of time I'll get back to the layer one. You're welcome by the way. I didn't mind doing the layer one. That's that's cool If I can get back to it, I'll try to do a second video, which is the trimmed down edited version um, I just haven't had a chance to do that. I'm essentially on holiday Not officially working, which is why you guys have been seeing so many videos with me painting and making stuff because um, that's 
that's what I do. I do other stuff as well, but I mean, it's uh, it's helping me relax. So I'm looking after myself right now. Uh, well, I think my eyes aren't fantastic, but I think that's essentially got all the bits that I needed black, black. But I've left the center free, as, as I said before, because I want to put white in there. All right, let's do this again. Uh, what's this, Daryl? Um, good on you. What's your favourite monster, by the way? What is my favourite? I have a lot of favourite monsters. I just like monsters full stop. Uh, I like mimics. I, I had a... I ran a story. Uh, I actually used Keep on the Borderlands. And I stuck a monster in there, which was a mimic. It was actually disguising itself. It was huge. Well, actually, probably more like Colossal. It disguised itself as a ruined... Um, tower, wizard's tower, and <laughs> they went inside and they didn't know, the players didn't know that it was full of little mimics that were living inside the bigger mimic. So yeah, it was uh, very entertaining. So I like mimics. Uh, I like beholders because they're just that scary. I like dragons. I prefer my dragons flying. I don't really like them on the ground. Uh, what else do I like? Uh, I'm using Modrons right now, and I actually I quite like the Modron, even though it's very simple. It, it's mechanic mechanically, it's nothing special, right? It's just it's just pretty basic, but uh, just the whole idea of the Modron is awesome. So yeah, those are the sorts of monsters I tend to like. I, I couldn't give you an absolute favourite monster that I I love the most, but yeah, lots and lots of monsters. And I thought I would. Um, get an opportunity, hopefully, I would make a, as an orchid jelly, I mean I did the, the grey ooze, but I feel like I've got one orchid jelly, and I feel like one orchid jelly is just not enough, and it, look, the grey ooze was uh, really simple, it was just like um, hot glue, paper clip, and a little bit of um, putty, nothing else, it was cheap as, so if I can do that, I can do an orchid jelly, just going to be a little bit larger on a larger base. Just need to have, I mean I've made some bases, but I've got some bases that I bought as well. So yeah. Uh, I like the Albear. I've used the Albear many times. Okay, so that one's pretty much done. Let's just see how the drying. Let's check. It's a touch dry, touch dry. Let's try this um this blow dryer. Oh well, it's gonna make some noise. I think that worked really well. <laughs> um, I could actually literally see it drying, but there are sections of it that have, where the, the black has actually sort of disappeared a little bit. So I'm gonna have to sort of touch that up. Come here. Go on. Here we go. So it's black. I'm not gonna leave it. I mean, it's gonna be black, but I'm gonna put highlights on it with a, a slightly lighter color like a, a grey, something that isn't completely black. All right, so that's that done. I have to come back to that. I'm not going to blow dry that one, just in case it does it again. And which one is this? That could do with a little bit of a dry. Let's dry it up. My brush is drying up. Let's move that. Do -do -do -do. Let's try this again.
Wow. That's all I gotta say. That works fast. <laughs> all right, let's grab the next one. I have to make sure I keep it away from the paints that I'm using, otherwise they're all gonna dry out. <laughs> Okay, definitely get yourself a hairdryer. That, that, that works really fast. I had no idea. Yeah, great, cool. Love it. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> I am so shocked. All right, let's just touch this one up again. <laughs> that was so easy. Oh my gosh. All right, cool. Now, um, we want to get some white in there. I think this brush is going to be way too big. Way too big. And I feel like that paint might have actually set on there. I'll be coming back to you, brush. I'm going to have to do some surgery with you sometime. Okay, all right, at least there's some other brushes here. Uh, we need white. So there's the white. And let's grab one of these brushes up. So I'm not using all, they're not all fantastic brushes. Some of them are just cheap brushes. I've only got like three really good brushes. And they, they are the Citadel brushes. And that, come on, separate, separate. Uh, crypto pussy. Is that how I pronounce it? Crypto pussy? Big brush for a big boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, giving me a small brush is kind of pointless because I'm not very good with it anyway. But um, the Citadel um, large dry brush, I've got one of those. I've got a standard brush and I've got a layers brush. I think I should have got myself a, um, a medium sized dry brush, but too late now. Right, so shaking the paint, shaking the paint. And just a little bit of that, since the paint's drying very fast anyway. And where was I up to? I was, I think I was up to here. All right. So I'm doing in the center because that's going to be red. And rather than trying to paint red straight over the black, which is probably not going to work very well, I'm going to put. A little bit of white over there instead and if I can do it without having to do too many touch-ups that'd be good too These little containers that I've got the um, miniatures stuck to with blue tag is awesome. Just roll it around, <laughs> put it on the desk. Okay. So there's a bit of white, I'll leave that for now, let's grab the next one. Uh, well, okay, so Enrique, is it Enrique? If I have pronounced your name incorrectly, hi, how's it going? If I have pronounced your name incorrectly, you need to help me pronounce it correctly by correcting me. It's the only way anybody will ever learn how to pronounce somebody's name correctly is if they are corrected. And um, I'm really bad at names, so I need to practice them. Uh, what's this, Daryl? Um, Fred, are you currently in a game or only DMing? Well, actually, I'm on, on a break from DMing and playing the game. 
Um, as of just a couple of weeks ago, I was DMing and playing. I would play on a Friday night. Uh, I was actually posting Friday night games, uh, but that was streamed, and then I think the stream was just too much, you know. Nobody senses what they say at my table on a Friday night, so I, I sort of ditched that idea, and I just would shoot just a little bit, and then if it needed heavy editing, I'd just throw it away, and if it, I could get sort of through it without there being too much bad language or topics that would get me disbarred, um, then I would put it up. And Tuesday night, I would normally run a game. I just finished up Curse of Strahd, and now I've started uh, Zenith Knights, which is essentially a combination of superheroes, or I guess you'd say um, Justice League or uh, Avengers and Dungeons and Dragons. And they are currently dealing with Modrons, little robot dudes. So, yeah. But right now I am on holiday. No Dungeons and Dragons for a little while. Uh... Enrique. All right, I got your name right. This is good news. Because it's important. If you guys can't see anything that I'm doing, if I'm turning the, uh, the miniature away from the camera, you need to let me know too so I can readjust it. I think this, this, the camera is pretty much coming straight down. But um, I realize that I'm also further away from the camera than than I suppose many would like. For some reason the Brio um, it doesn't have a, a saving function. I can't save the settings. So I'll set it up and no, can't save the settings. Tried to find information on how to do it and I, th I think my brother-in-law found some information on how to do it but none of the instructions either of us understood. So therefore, couldn't do it. And it sounded really complicated. <laughs> so. Okay. That is done. Okay, cool. Put that aside. Oh, I'll quick look so you can see. So essentially, I've just painted white in the center there because I want to put red there. Okay, so next, uh, while we're at it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that blow dryer out again because that was so much fun. Let's do it again. Awesome. all set. Right now I need a smaller brush and hmm I feel like trying to get to the face and trying to get to the hands they're so small so hard to see there's a little dagger there as well I've got to try and pick that up. Uh, oh it's going to be going to require lots of effort on my part. Let us try to tackle the face first. Hmm. Oh, I brought myself a cloth this time, so I can actually, I can actually get get things off.
Okay, so I'm just trying to pick up the face with the white before I go to flesh. I don't know if you can necessarily see that. I'll, I'll bring it a bit closer so you can have a look, a look. And I've tried just to use just a little bit of paint so that there's dark shadows. Not that I suspect all of those dark shadows are going to stay, but um, yeah, can you see that? Just a little bit closer and uh, yeah, yeah, there's just a little bit of white starting to be picked up and that should hopefully make it a little bit easier to put the flesh over the top of that. Okay, let's do the others. And I'm going to have to keep washing my brush out often, otherwise this heat is just going to dry everything up. That one done. That brush is just getting a little bit wet. It's just so small. I feel like that brush is going to get damaged if I quite keep doing that too much. Okay, all right, so that's them. Back to here. And now let's deal with the hands. Um, there's a little cat. so hard to make out. The detail isn't very good. Hmm. Oh, it's just so hard to make out. Okay, I don't know if you can necessarily see that, but I'll get it a little bit closer. It's really hard to pick up because the hands are so small and the detail's not very good. Trying to pick out the hands is really, really difficult. I'm actually thinking I might skip and do um, like a light grey uh, brush over the whole thing so I can see where all the details are because right now it's just it just looks black and it's very hard to see where everything is. So that might be a plan. A bit of black. And uh, 
have something to mix it with. Mix, mix, mix. There we go, there's some brushes. Okay, let's see if this works. I use a light, large dry brush to try and pick out all the details so I can see what's going on. Um, okay, all right, let's, let's grab one and try it. So I think this way is probably gonna be best. Okay, that is definitely helping. Let's do that again. Okay, I don't know if you can necessarily see that, but I'll bring it closer so you can. Um, and I'll just rotate it a little bit and you can see there's a few little highlights so I can see sort of where the, the highs and the lows are and it's helped sort of pick out the hand a little bit and the face a little bit just a smidgen okay so I'll do that with all of them move you out of the way grab you you're next Same thing again. Third time lucky.
Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna have to have to clean it out now. Okay, so I'll give you a look at the the best example of what's taken place. Uh, where is it? I feel like. This one's probably about as good as it gets. So this one, it's just basically all of the raised areas, mostly the raised areas have been hit by the paint and I can actually see a little bit more of the detail so I know where I'm working now. Just because all of the, all the things I've got to paint are so small. Hopefully you can see that. If I'm not close enough you let me know. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this brush out. Dry it off. Do, 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 do. Okay. And that's good. Deal with you a bit more. Okay, right next. Um, where am I? I think I'm going to be going red. So we need a brush for the red. How am I going to apply it? I'm going to go with a standard sort of jewel. I think that'll be the one. little dagger there so I'll avoid the dagger as best I can Okay, so I've avoided the dagger and I've avoided the belt and I've got most of the red where I needed it to be. If that makes sense. That's pretty much what I've done so far. I'll do the same thing with the other two.
Didn't miss the dagger this time, I managed to wind up painting all over it. <laughs> Never mind. Can you imagine how many times I would have had to paint this red over if I hadn't put the white on first? Okay, that's that one done. Okay, that's another one. I'm going to wash that out and probably apply another layer just to build the color up just a little bit more. Anyway, let's do that now. And I'll grab my ear, my little tool. Back to the red.
brushes separating of it. Hang on. Alright, so I've got a, a good solid red colour on there now. Okay, that's that one. Okay, cool. So we've got the red in, it's that done. Uh, next, I've got to try to pick out those uh, hands. Um, where is my, my plan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna not feel quite so bad. I mean, that's that seems reasonable. Okay, let's uh, go with that one. I'm not painting the red anymore, so we can go with the white again. There's no white there, so let's try some white. Got to shake it. Got to shake it.
barely make out the details. much. Pick out the face, hands, okay. So it's because the details are so difficult to pick up, it's going to be pretty important to just wash this so that all the, um, the crevices go dark again because you just can't dry brush anything this small and make it look good. It's just way too small. There's a thumb there, a thumb that I hadn't seen before. Uh, what's this, Daryl? Fred, while you are working away, would you mind talking about some of the more memorable adventures your characters have had in your years of playing the game? Uh, any with cultists, for example. Okay, I can tell you right now that I haven't ever played a single adventure uh, where I f felt that cultists made the game better. Um, in fact, I would say the closest one would have to be Keep on the Borderlands, but that's simply because it, it, it wasn't just cultists. So, um, most memorable adventure. Um, the Red Hand. The Red Hand of Doom was a third edition adventure and uh, I enjoyed that for a little while and then we, we seem to 
never be able to do anything right after that. I think we got to the swamp and then things just unraveled from there on. Um, I enjoyed that. Uh, what else have I done that I enjoyed? Um, Umbra. I had a campaign called Umbra where I ran it and the players were they were part of a circus. So it was a, a different premise to what you would normally expect. And uh, I didn't either finish that campaign, but yeah, it was it was kind of fun. Lots of homebrew in that one. I, I threw in pre-made adventures, I made my own stuff up. Um, I made, um, it was more like an episode for, from a TV series, that one. Um, Godfrey's Evil Hats. I started running that. I ran that adventure. That was fun. Basically, Godfrey's Evil Hats was about a bunch of, uh, what I say, a mice, actually. These mice, these two mice, one was very clever, one was not so clever. Um, and uh, you may see similarities from things you've watched before on TV, because I certainly took it from there. They had constructed a flying hat that was invisible, that was sitting on top of a mountainside. And uh, they had a whole lot of minions. They built robots so that uh, nobody could realize they were actually mice. And they were controlling everything, and they were using hats. I, um, I took them from a, I took, took license from uh, the Robinsons, basically. And these, these hats, when they attached themselves, they were like robotic, magical robotic things. They attached to somebody and they took their brain over and uh, yeah, these mice were trying to take over a town and I had some characters come in and these characters were t to be fair it was it was more like a, a mixture of James Bond and um, Mission Impossible that sort of thing with a splattering of um, Looney Tunes so now that sounds a little bit strange. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to pick up the, the skulls on the back. And yeah, the players had to try to figure out what was going on and get into the... trying to get into the, the flying hat that was invisible sitting on top of a mountainside. That was pretty hard for the players. But they got there. And I included a whole lot of magic items that were sort of very James Bondy-ish, you know, like the Hat of Disguise, and um, I had them airdrop from a dragon. <laughs> that was pretty memorable. I enjoyed that a lot. One of my favourite pre-made adventures has still got to be <coughs> Isle of Dread or Island of Dread. It's a hex crawl. It's got some something of everything. And obviously, it's got dinosaurs, but it's got pirates. It's got natives. It's got monsters. It's got creatures. It's got um, dra it's got, I put a dragon underneath it. Well, there was a dragon there anyway, but I just made it a bigger dragon. Um, yeah, Hydra it was a rock, flying big flying bird. So you could go somewhere and you could wind up facing things that you just couldn't cope with. It was absolutely hilarious. And surprisingly, my players keep coming back for more. You know you're doing alright even if the game seems deadly and the players keep coming back. I wasn't really making it deadly. In fact, they th I think they made it more deadly than I did. We were using plot twist cards back then, and so they could affect the story um, by playing a plot twist card. That, that could really complicate things. Okay. Let's just clean it off. <coughs> okay, so I'll show you what I've done. This is kind of messy. I mean, the whole idea is to pick up the, the details as best you can and then get in there with a smaller brush to tidy things up. But basically, yeah, picking out the skulls on the back now.
do 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 do. I am going to have to go and do some uh, buffing. I've got uh, some bone carvings that I have to finish. So I'm going to have to go very shortly. But we will come back to this. But let's get this, the basics of this done. Little brush is going all funny. Yeah, was that uh, enough, Daryl? Yep, not quite as good as the uh, the first attempt. But you go back through with a finer brush and then tidy it up and then put a wash over it. And, ah. Sorry if I'm not talking very much, it's just very hard to sort of focus on this. Yeah, I mean, I, I could throw out ideas. My biggest problem is, is everything is so small right now, so um, talking about anything that I might have done in the past, <laughs> I'm trying to keep the brush stable and steady. Right, now I'm just going to get rough, rough about it and just tidy up with a little smaller pa um, paintbrush. It's going to take me forever otherwise. Okay, that's that. So. It's pretty rough, but I'll go back over with a smaller brush and tidy it up and uh, maybe try. I feel like I should go over a couple of times with the white to sort of pick it out a bit more. Anyway, uh, where are, how are we for time? Right, I'm, let's, let's, put, let's put a bit of flesh on this thing and then I'm going to have to go because I'm supposed to be going and polishing stuff. And I'll come back and we'll continue with the, the cultists some other time. It's the thing about painting, it's always a very time consuming process. So I think I'm going to go with white. I feel like that flesh colour is just awful to work with, it's so thin. 
So I'm going to go with white since I've already got white there and I'm going to use the flesh. This is the flat flesh. I'll put that in another container that sort of that, that feels a bit damp. It looks feels grayish. I think I just use that. Um, let's go in here. That looks dry. And we'll put the flesh in there. <coughs> Don't do that. Stay there. Stay. All right. Good. I'm definitely going to have to move to a smaller brush because this this face is just tiny. Well, that's just not enough. Let's try a bit more. Yeah, let's just drop it in. He's going to be a pasty cultist. So thin. How can I rectify that? Oh, I know. Ha. Huh. Yes, I'll do that. Let's put it over here. Come on. So I've mixed white flesh and tan in there. And we've got a, a slightly different colour. Let's see if this works. I'm going to try it on a hand first before I go for the face. bleeding around just a bit too much. It's just a bit too runny. Okay, how can we fix that? I need the paint to harden a bit. Get my blow dryer. We go. Let's try that now.
Okay. It's another one. Okay, it's another one done. Hey. Good. My dry.
Okay. That can you always still be a problem. Wonderful. All right, so let's have a look out of these. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So this is not finished, it'll probably take me a little bit longer to get all three done. But um, I've got the, the flesh, I started to get the flesh onto the hands and the face. I've got the red uh, for the, the clothing underneath. I've got um, the skulls I've started to pick out on the back. And we'll have to come back some other time. I will probably also have to pick up some additional paints. Hopefully that is coming out. Uh, if it's a bit unclear, it's because it's not finished and also too. I'm not sure my camera is focusing properly. Anyway, if you found this helpful or informative or just liked hanging out with me while I was painting, um, you can keep coming back because I'll probably keep doing it. Look, all of the materials, all the paints, the brushes, I'll put in the description if you want to know where to find them or what they are. <clears throat> And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments when it's, it goes up. Um, it won't go up straight away. I'll leave it unlisted for a little while. And um, yeah, that's, that's essentially it. Yeah, I'll answer questions in the comments when you're ready. And uh, till next time. Hey, um, you keep rolling those 20s because I'm going to sign on out. What was the, the T miniature from? And what does T-E-H mean? I'm not quite sure what that means. If you could explain to me, that'd be awesome. <clears throat> Maybe chuck it in the comments, man, and I'll, I'll answer it later, okay? But uh, yeah, I've got to go and do some polishing. The sorry. Ah. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. Just a mispronunciation. Oh, right, the. What was the miniature from? Oh, it's from the, the Wrath of a Shardalon. The Wrath of a Shardalon. It's the board game. And I'll, I'll put it in the description can you, so you can find it. It won't be a problem. So if you're looking for these miniatures, not going to be an issue. But in any case, I'm going to sign out and say good afternoon for me and good night or good morning for everybody else.